Uh, in my talk, I will not talk about uh, the innovations and the, and the research. Rather, I will take a, a focus on uh, the market and the commercial aspects. Uh, because at the end of the day, of course, we all hope that our great innovations will reach uh, the market. A little bit of introduction. I work for, uh, for Signify. Uh, we are the leading lighting company in, uh, in the world. Uh, some of our brands that you may be familiar with uh, include uh, Philips, Hue and, uh, and True Li-Fi. And we're really, as a lighting company, investing very heavily in bringing Li-Fi uh, to market. Uh, the, the main message of my presentation today is that the future potential of Li-Fi is here today. And there are many exciting Li-Fi innovations taking place, and there's a lot of important, uh, very exciting research uh, going on. Uh, but I truly believe that in order to go to market, there is no need to wait. Uh, our current generation of Li-Fi technology is uh, mature enough to start building the first commercial products. And what we really need to focus on now is to grow this market and to make sure that it is ready for, for high volume mass market adoption. So uh, in order to underpin this, uh, I think there are many, many interesting market segments where Li-Fi technology products and services can be brought to market. Um, I'm sharing here one of them, a digital industry. Um, uh, essentially anywhere where you may anticipate challenges with uh, wireless RF based communication, uh, either because of legislation or because of uh, health concerns or because of uh, uh, electromagnetic interference or because of security considerations. Now, all of these are areas where Li-Fi really can make uh, a, a fantastic addition to the to the landscape of communication technologies that are already available and i've listed some examples here uh, for instance in uh, in in industry uh, where you can have very high harsh requirements with uh, welding robots and moving metal parts and these environments are very hostile uh, towards uh, rf uh, signal propagation uh, also, if you uh, assemble in large metal structures or you do underground construction, obviously uh, RF-based wireless is, is problematic and Li-Fi can really bring uh, solutions uh, that add value to, to customers. Uh, similarly, in uh, ultra high performance environments with uh, real-time considerations, latency becomes very important. Uh, and again, uh, Li-Fi uh, can uh, provide solutions here that uh, RF-based wireless systems uh, cannot. And, and really the, uh, the, the commonality across all these segments, and there are many, many more where you can bring products to market today. The commonality really uh, is that they share a number of pain points like uh, coverage, interference, and security where uh, RF uh, can be problematic. Uh, so the, the, the main point of this slide is uh, there are already market segments that are very uh, happy to, to receive uh, solutions that address real, real uh, problems for them. Uh, on this slide, I'd like to share uh, some uh, examples of companies who have already successfully brought uh, Li-Fi solutions to the market. In the top right corner, uh, this is an example from, uh, from OLEDCOM who have integrated uh, Li-Fi into a, a desk luminaire and then have a uh, receiver uh, uh, connected via a USB dongle to a, to a communication device, a laptop in this case. And, and, uh, and this is a, a really good way to provide uh, network connectivity. Um, uh, but we see uh, integration of Li-Fi technology in all sorts of uh, devices and, and products. Uh, in ruggedized laptops for harsh industrial environments, even in mobile phones for uh, in consumer uh, electronic devices, uh, and even into uh, aeroplanes. And, uh, and the speaker just prior to me, Professor Lee, already indicated that uh, you know, Li-Fi communication in airplane cabins is a really interesting application domain. Uh, I have a few more examples. The li -Fi, we see Li-Fi being integrated in, uh, in general lighting applications, in, in troughers, in, in downlights, in high bay applications. Uh, so that's really good. Um, also, uh, uh, 
one of the earlier presentations by Professor uh, Bukrov, he indicated a useful uh, application of Li-Fi is in sports uh, stadiums. Well, an example very close to my heart is here in the bottom left. Uh, what you see in the background here is a football stadium, uh, in particular the PSV football stadium, which is my favorite club. So I had to include this example in, uh, in my presentation. But the point really here is that there are already companies bringing commercial products to the market. They are being installed, they are being deployed. And this is really the time for, uh, for everybody to jump on this train and, and help us uh, create this, uh, this mass market. Uh, on this slide, I show an example of uh, all the deployments that, uh, that our company has around the globe. Uh, I'm sure if I uh, superimpose on top of this uh, the, uh, the geographic deployments from, from all the Li-Fi companies uh, around, then we really see a very dense penetration already in, in all major geographies. Uh, and th this again is a signal that uh, the technology is becoming mature and there's really a market uh, developing and, and, and growing for these types of uh, products. Now, this, of course, doesn't uh, come uh, for free. It doesn't happen uh, out of itself. And a number of important uh, uh, conditions need to be in place. Uh, um, for example, uh, industry alliances. And uh, I want to uh, emphasize here the Light Communications Alliance, or LCA, which is an industry alliance that brings together thought leaders in the industry uh, today, there are uh, almost 20 companies from, uh, from the telecom world, from uh, equipment manufacturers, from the lighting industry, and from research and academia that come together to promote uh, uh, wireless optical communications and to educate the market uh, and to educate the industry on what Li-Fi can and cannot do, where it can be used, and how it can be adopted. And I invite all of you to, uh, to visit their website uh, and also to consider joining us so that together as an industry, we can drive this market uh, forward. Uh, other important aspects to drive the market are standardization. There are a number of activities ongoing in, in the international standardization environment that help uh, further maturing the technology. Uh, I will uh, summarize a few, uh, starting with, uh, with ITU. Uh, what ITU have done is to take an existing uh, home network standard that is based on wireline power line communication and adapt it to make it suitable also for uh, optical wireless communication by adding uh, features for interference management and inter-domain handover. Uh, also adding some uh, IEEE uh, basic security mechanisms to, uh, to make sure that these uh, environments play nicely together. Uh, this is all resulting in uh, what we call the G.VLC standard, uh, which will be uh, approved and published uh, later this quarter. And silicon is already available. And in fact, some of the commercial examples that I showed in earlier slides are based on, uh, on this standard. Uh, this is not the only standard out there. There's also IEEE. Uh, uh, this is very uh, exciting and promising because they take Wi-Fi 6 as a starting point. Uh, and then add some uh, additional optical uh, considerations to it, such as the support for low cost uh, LED drivers. Uh, but the idea here really is to make as few adjustments as possible, so as to allow maximum reuse of uh, already commercially available uh, 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 Wi-Fi chips. Uh, the publication and approval is, uh, is anticipated uh, somewhere in the 2020-2023 timeframe. Uh, although uh, I'll, I'll leave it to one of the later speakers uh, to, uh, uh, to provide a lot more detail on the uh, IEEE uh, standardization activities, which are very, very exciting. And so standardization is an important uh, step stone towards uh, commercialization and industrialization, uh, but there are more. Uh, for example, what is also needed is a strong interoperability certification program. Uh, because interoperability and the certification thereof uh, helps lower the barriers to uh, wide industry adoption. Uh, it encourages more companies in the industry to build competitive proposition. And it increases consumer confidence because you know that uh, uh, an access point that you buy will work with, uh, with endpoints from other manufacturers and you can mix and match and, and buy the best products that uh, suit your purpose. 
So some activities are already ongoing. Uh, for example, the ITU standard is being certified in the Home Grid Forum, which again is an industry alliance that is open for membership. And similarly, the uh, IEEE standards will end up being certified by the Wi-Fi Alliance, uh, which is also a, a global open organization, uh, which you can join to, uh, to submit your products for certification. Um, uh, Home Grid Forum and Wi-Fi Alliance will address the, uh, the basement and, and silicon aspects of this certification. Uh, today, typically, they do not have any optical uh, expertise. So uh, we've started thinking about what we need to do in order to tool up an optical front-end certification program to ensure interoperability. Uh, and it may very well be that we need to set up uh, something uh, new or, or in addition to what's already there, because the optical certification aspects uh, may require new measuring methods and new uh, testing tools. Uh, and this is typically expertise that is not yet present in either home grid forum or, or Wi-Fi Alliance. And these are some of the um, activities that we use to, to build out the market and to make sure that, uh, that the market can grow and that all the companies active in this space can be uh, commercially uh, successful. Uh, and, and standardization is a really good start to uh, building the ecosystem that is needed to, uh, to enable the market to grow because standardization brings together various companies including the lighting companies but also the telecommunication and network companies device manufacturers chip manufacturers network operators uh, communication service providers uh, and research and academia and together they can progress uh, the technology even further uh, but more is needed and there's really a large and diverse a stakeholder network that we need to engage in these activities. Uh, for example, uh, legislators, uh, regulators, and policymakers. Uh, based on one of the uh, presentations yesterday, there were questions about eye safety and eye safety standards. Uh, and the answer was that uh, eye safety standards uh, in different countries are different. And that, of course, is a roadblock to mass market adoption on a global scale. So we need to influence and lobby with regulators and with governments to make sure that uh, uh, Li-Fi products can be uh, deployed on a large scale. Uh, but there's a lot more. Uh, um, one of the issues that we face is that uh, we can integrate Li-Fi into lighting products, but uh, the people buying lighting products are typically different uh, from the people that buy communication products. If you uh, consider large office buildings, uh, the lighting systems are sold to the building manager and the uh, communication systems are sold to the uh, enterprise network ar architect or the CIO. So we need to bring these communi uh, communities together. Uh, we need to work with installers, uh, building managers. Uh, we need to work with test houses and certification authorities with end user groups. Um, a whole new generation of engineers need to be trained to be able to install and work with these systems. Uh, and this is a lot of work to, uh, to orchestrate and coordinate all of this. And my call out to all of you is to, to join and to help out and to contribute um, um, in this effort and also to bring your uh, network uh, of context uh, to the table so that we can uh, together work to drive this market. Uh, so I'd like to conclude my presentation with a call to action that the future of Li-Fi communication is here today. Please be part of that future. And you can do that by joining a Li-Fi industry alliance, uh, such as, for example, the Light Communication Alliance, uh, LCA, or the organization that is kindly hosting uh, this fantastic event, uh, the International Solid State Lighting Alliance. You can also do it by contributing to standardization, either in the ITU or IEEE. Uh, you can help by defining, setting up and launching the certification program. Uh, you can reach out to manufacturers that are already on the market with, uh, with Li-Fi products or with Li-Fi components that you can integrate into your own uh, product plans. Uh, and of course, uh, I very much invite you to continue to push the boundaries in, in research and, and academia uh, so that we can uh, continue to evolve and further improve this, this great innovation.